I haven't played disc golf in weeks, and this Friday is supposed to clean up, so I'm super excited, and I'm finally going to get to get out. Friday, finally able to get out and play. First recorded round of 2024. We're gonna go. We're gonna go to a course called Oakwood. I don't know why talking is so hard. We're gonna go to. We're going to go to a course called Oakwood. It's a small course, but we're doing a small course because of lack of practice. I'm sure I'm pretty rusty, but this course is very technical still. It's not really disc golf holes. It's kind of like uh, you would imagine yourself scrambling. So. Let's see how it goes. I basically have no choice but to get wet feet because all my shoes are getting beat up and I'm stubborn. Even some of my shoes are starting to talk to me. Hey Brad, it's time to get new shoes. Did you just tell Brad to get new shoes? I've been telling him forever. But I refuse. I'll just have to deal with it for now and uh, I do need new shoes. But the snow will stop soon. All right, here we are at Oakwood, and the snow was this deep, and it's seemingly this deep, which means I'm probably wrong. The reason it melted so quickly, too, is because it was two days of uh, rain, which is now persisting into my schedule. So, should be a pretty fun day. Hole one is 320 feet. It was designed as a two-shot hole originally, but then he opened up this gap, and it's still very forgiving, so a lot of people just go down that fairway now. I should disc up because of the snow, but, I'm not, and I'm gonna use a buzz. Oh, that's far with the snow. With hitting the tree branch, I'm actually very happy with that. In the snow, I'm left with two options to either do a standstill or to really shorten my run up and get a little lower so that my balance is a little more secure. I chose the uh, second option. Very happy with this because of the snow and the tree branch slowed me down. So just being this close with the buzz, I'm, I'm okay with. I might actually win in. All right, again, not gonna record my 10 footers for the sake of film footage and I miss them and no one wants to see that shit. Hole two, I believe is like 370 feet. It's a flex line or a turnover line. It opens up quite a bit. A raindrop just fell right on my head. It's either a flex line or a turnover, opens up quite a bit out there and comes back. But this is the only dirt pad at the course and it goes uphill. So the line is actually quite hard to hit just because of the footing. And it's ice and snow. Going with an octane. That was way better than it should have been because execution, execution was poor. All this slush made me slip and it's super easy to hyzer out anyways on this hole. Yep, just as I thought. There it is. And there's the basket over there. So I'm going to go for this little hero forehand anhyzer. I don't know how I'm going to record it for you guys. I'm just going to put it here, I guess. All right, hopefully, hopefully you can see it roll in. If it, if it even does that. Well, I don't even know if I have this shot, actually. Yeah, I have to go a different gap. Perfect. All right, well, I guess I have a reasonable gap now. Well, I knew I said it'd be rusty, but you hate to see it. In all honesty, though, the gaps I had to hit weren't really gaps, so it was just up to prayer anyways. Maybe we can save it. Good run. All right, first hole of Oakwood. This is definitely not hole three at 285 feet, and it's definitely not a hyzer line that puts you at circle's edge or circle two for a finish. Uh, normally I use a T-bird here, but I'm gonna use a Octane. This is a little flippier, a little faster, and it looks like with all this ice, I'm gonna have to do a standstill. Oh, that was perfect. I guess not perfect. But well, I was literally gonna park. All right, that really screwed a park job, but it should be an easy part anyways. Right behind that hill. Should be good. That one was a little, give me my disc. That one was a little far. A lot can actually go wrong in those first three holes, especially in the snow. So par's not too bad. I ended up with a double bogey on one, unfortunately, but it happens. 
These next three holes is our first stretch of easy musket birdies. So three musket birdies. Doesn't always happen, but that's our goal. This one, I'm not quite sure. I think it's like 240 to 270. It looks roughly about 240, I'd say. That's gonna go way right. Not good. It's real hard with, really. I guess I can try, I guess, because when I turned away, my camera fell backwards. That's literally what I just did. The snow makes it real hard. <laughs> We're gonna play for my first one, the one that you guys didn't see. I cannot do it with this thing on from this far away. Oh, please. Yes. All right, you got a camera dribble. Let me get that off you. This one's another one of the musket birdies. It's usually around like 260, 270. It's a little longer than the other one. But now it's about the same distance because a tree fell on top of the tee pad, which is crazy. And I'll show you that here in a minute. And just as well, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do like or comment. And I also am doing gaming videos now for any of the community that likes gaming videos. Just kind of for fun and episode fillers. It's not going to get in the way of the uh, disc golf content, but it's just to add to it. And uh, repurpose what I enjoy doing. All right, got our pro pick. It's very slushy here. I'm going to go stand still. That was super short. <laughs> I think I'm circle's edge or outside circle one. Yeah, there's the uh, T sign. I played right from here. This must have just happened. Looks like I got a straddle. Nope, it's gonna go to the other side. Get in there. Ah, oh, thank you. I was feeling pretty good about that 80 footer I made last time, so. This one you can't really see, but it's just the hyzer finish. It's another musket birdie, but it's one of the more difficult ones, or it is the more difficult of the three. I'm gonna go with the glow pig, cause with this uh, slippery stuff, I've been having to get a little more upright, causing me to go flatter and turn things over. So hopefully this extra stability helps out. Looks like I gotta do another standstill as well. Maybe I should go with my regular pig. I'm surprised that even got caught at all. All right, not too bad actually. It must have just hit the edge of it and that's why I got confused. And I'm right here. Why does it get harder and more intimidating as it gets shorter when you make putts? Even though I was pretty confident there. All right, hole seven, just under 300 feet, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna have to put the distances here for you. I thought they had the distances here, I guess not. But I'm guessing right around 280. It's a four-hander. There's also a backhand shot. And if you land left, you're actually around circles as you're 40 feet looking at it. So a lot of people do like that backhand route. But the forehand route is definitely the shot here. I'm gonna throw in a forehand in a minute and I lost my go-to forehand disc. So shouldn't be good, shouldn't be great. We'll see. my first time throwing that disc. It was flippier than I thought it would be. I forced it over a little too much though, so it's a good thing. Not what I was looking for, but it was my first time throwing the disc and I actually like the stability of it, so it's a good thing. One thing that's been a struggle, my camera keeps dying at 60% or 60 something percent right now. I don't know if it's because I just figured out how to put it into 4K resolution, and maybe that's the reason why, or if it's because it's cold weather. But right now it's at 60% and it keeps dying on me, <laughs> saying low battery. Oh, no way. So this one's 250 feet. It's a really touchy forehand. Or you could do a real big spike forehand. With the snow, I don't have that power or that shot today. And with the new disc, I don't really have the touch forehand either. But there is a hanging basket on this hole that is really cool, and we'll see that in a minute. Short story about this hole. There's always players that come up here and they're like, oh, there's a backhand hyzer route. And then they throw their disc over there, and most of the time it doesn't work, and they get like a six or something. You know who you are if you're one of those players. Oh, it's a good flight for the disc. I just got to learn it. Wouldn't this be a cool one to make? Unfortunately, to do it, it means getting my feet wet. I also found out that it was the 4K fact that was dying my battery at 60%, which is kind of weird. I do have a backup battery, but I need to figure something else out for that. 
right, here's the hanging basket. And there's my disc. Will I make this putt? This one's 212 feet, just straight up the gut. But there is a river right at Circle's Edge that's OB, which makes it a really cool hole. And you could tell probably by now at this course that all the fairways are really particular in their lines, or it's a very awkward throw to begin with. A lot of people take a backhand route on this hole, but I think this one's more of a forehand. And I'm going to try my hand at a forehand, hand at a forehand, hand at a forehand. See ya. I don't know if I scared those birds or not. I'm pretty sure I threw short into the river. <laughs> Thank you. It's right there. Not that I would have lost it. I just didn't really want the stroke to go. Hole 10 is like the epitome of what I'm talking about with uh, weird, awkward lines. 158 feet is all it is. But it's like 100 feet that way. And then it's just 60 feet just straight to the left. And the basket's like, I don't know if you can see it. Right there. Weird. So obviously this hole was designed to do that and that. But even the course designer goes up the gut. Up that little area just to hopefully get through. The problem with that is there's a river on the left. Which puts it into danger. But I mean if you want the birdie. That was like the best I've ever peered that shot. By the way, if you're new to the channel, I do instructional videos as well. And at the end of the video, I will have clickable links for you as well as in the description. I know I said I want to do the 10 footers, but this one's special. Plus that river, if you can see it. This one's 264 feet. And again, it's another weird angle one. It goes out maybe about 150 feet. And then you want to go far left. It's another two shotter basically. You can make it happen in one shot, but it's extremely hard. I've rarely seen it done because it's so far left. I'm going with a champion ape. And one of the problems is, is you need a flare skip. And with this snow, I don't have it. My camera just died on me again. I'm just gonna throw this. It looked like it was great, but it was too fast of a disc moving too far forward. I would have been in the woods, but still circle two. Not a bad position to be, but I don't really have a putt with this tree right in my way. I did do a slight anti putt. I don't mind those though. All right, that wasn't bad. Look at this beautiful, beautiful basket in green. Uh, it's hard to hold this and do that, but this is in the nice green. All right, unfortunately my GoPro keeps dying at like 30 something percent, so I may not be able to finish this video. So just in case, thank you for watching and see you guys later. Or I may just film it on my phone to finish out, but I don't know how good the quality will be on that. Hole 12 is 226 feet. I'm gonna go with an R Pro Pig. It's kind of a forehand, or you could take a lofty backhand putter over the bushes. Don't hit that. Or, or hit something else. Mother Nature's not doing me any favors. And all honesty, that shot was pretty peered. I'm a little upset about it. But my camera died at me again. So I'm just going to let you guys go. And I, I think I got enough practice. 12 holes is enough. You'll be able to see this course again in the future. I will do a whole record around here. I'm just going to be a little better prepared. And I will be putting, instead of front nine, back nine, it'll just be whole recorded rounds. All right, see you guys later. Thank you for watching. So this is the path I'm supposed to go to get back. I don't know if ICE or the winter did this or if they just haven't been maintaining it. It looks like it's been lack of maintenance. I'm stranded here. I guess I'll disc golf forever. Are you kidding me? What the? I just got on the other side of that other, other patch. And I'm tired. What is going on? This is crazy. Is this from a bunch of heavy ice? What? Well, that was absurd. So the question got brought up, what are my plans for disc golf in the future in this channel? I already asked you that. 
Well, for right now, I'm just making content and coaching. I'm not really doing anything with tournaments or anything. I don't have the money or the energy or the time anymore. But I do plan on making some changes to where I can get back out there. And hopefully you'll see me back out there in a couple years. All right. Thank you, guys. See ya. Did I ask you to record yourself disc golfing, too?